For years, I traveled alone in remote rural sub-Saharan Africa, a social entrepreneur with a crazy mission to stop the death toll of AIDS. At some point, my board of directors, after hearing where I'm traveling, insisted that I purchase kidnap and ransom insurance. The mere thought freaked me out, and I declined. They would never imagine that what I feared and dreaded most was far less violent. It was walking into my hotel room, alone, not for fear that someone would be there. On the contrary, it was knowing that no one would be. Night after night, in my semi-lit, dead silent, no signal hotel room. When we walk into a room full of people, the first thing we do is look around for a familiar face. And if we can't find one, we pull out that phone, our safety net, and in seconds, we're no longer alone. Even with children, the worst punishment they inflict on one another is social isolation. In prison, the ultimate punishment, solitary confinement, worse than hanging around with a bunch of murderers and rapists. So we fight loneliness by collecting people. We collect relationships, we collect social circles. We hold on to our phone, that lifeline of ours, for any type of message, Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever it is, so that we know that we matter to the people around us, our social lifeline. But as long as we're young, healthy, and mobile, staying connected to the people that we collected, it's pretty easy. But as we grow and age, hold on to those people that we collected becomes more difficult because we lose the skills that we needed to collect new ones. Likely, we will be more alone than not. I never really gave this topic much thought. In the back of my mind, my mother would always nag me, did you call your grandma? And, you know, I was busy, right? I got stuff to do. I never really had a chance, but she was always so grateful for the occasional phone call or the occasional visit. And, you know, she's got 24-7 help, not by someone who speaks her language, but She's covered, right? And then a few months ago, I was invited to join the advisory board of a company dealing with hip fracture among the elderly. And in my due diligence process, I came across an article that really grabbed me. It was about loneliness among the elderly who lose their mobility and get stuck at home. I'm not really sure what happened, but somehow I started digging deeper and deeper into the subject of loneliness among the elderly, reading every study and article I could find. And then I saw her. I swear I saw her for the very first time. I saw my grandmother, that's her, sitting in her semi-lit, dead silent, no signal living room, confined to her lazy boy chair, TV set turned on, but social circles turned off many years ago. Do you know how when you're hungry and you're driving, all you can see are billboard ads with food? Or when you want to buy a new car, all you can see on the street is that particular make? Suddenly, all I could see were elderly people. In a supermarket, in the bank, in the park. Where were they all this time? Apparently, while I was sleeping, the world went through a tsunami of aging. The fastest growing population segment on the planet are the eldest of the elderly. In fact, there are three times more people over the age of 85 than there were in 1980. And a whopping 90% of them choose to age at home, whether or not they have the means to move into a retirement community, because home means independence. Home is where memories live, the smells, the tastes, the warmth. But home means alone, and alone may mean loneliness. According to experts, loneliness is the biggest epidemic of the modern world. And what I'm going to show you here is the tip of the iceberg 
of the research that exists. One of the most esteemed uh, lecturers in the University of Chicago talks about loneliness that is akin to physical pain. And it's particularly disturbing loneliness among the elderly because we don't notice it. We don't see it. We don't see them. So elderly people get a bit lonely. What's the big deal? Oh, it is a big deal. Loneliness is like smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Loneliness is twice as hazardous to your health as obesity, and one and a half times that of excessive drinking. Loneliness can also trigger depression, which keeps happy people away from us, further deepening the problem. And if I haven't depressed you enough yet, here's another fun fact. An elderly who is lonely is 64% more likely to suffer from Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, according to the CDC. But we don't really see it, because it takes years, decades to develop. And no one's bleeding, so there is no rush. Loneliness is also extremely expensive. We spend billions of dollars on medications and health infrastructure and physicians in place, but we totally neglect the underlying root cause of so many of these chronic conditions. Treating loneliness as a source will reduce the amount of patients and reduce the infrastructure that is required. And we're paying for this infrastructure with our tax dollars. Who would have thought that keeping the elderly socially active and happy would be the fiscally responsible thing to do? It's like the joke about the two elderly sitting leisurely in the waiting room of the physician's office, and one says to the other, where were you? I didn't see her yesterday. And he says, ah, oh, yeah, I was sick. <laughs> they say ignorance is bliss. And I was so comfortable not knowing, but now I know. And I'm wondering out loud, if we don't solve this for them now, who's going to solve it for us? There is no one simple, obvious solution. But I know that alleviating loneliness does not come in the form of a syringe or a pill. It comes in the form of positive, quality interaction. It comes with repurposing and creating meaning for the elderly in our community. It comes with speaking a language that everyone can understand. And that may mean more than 140 characters, less emojis, and no hashtags, so that the elderly can be included in the conversation. I'm not a geriatrician. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a community health worker. But what the elderly need does not require a fancy degree. It just requires attention. Thank you very much.